Hey, Katie girls, we're back. Did you miss us? <laughs> we missed you. Mm-hmm. And just like a bad penny, we turn up again. But hey, welcome to Cubs Out Loud Drag Race All Stars Season 8, episode number one, where we are going to be recapping the first four episodes <laughs> of the newest season because uh, we're busy. We got things going on. And, um, well, yeah. <laughs> Damn, already. Well, <laughs> I know we're going to get into it, but, you know, <laughs> let's just say it's not rocking my world. Mm. But we are going to discuss the first four episodes, like I said. The Fame Games, it's RDR Live, The Supermarket Ball, and Screen Queens. Mm-hmm. So there's that. Uh, but it is Sunday, May 28th. It's Memorial Day weekend. And what better to do on a holiday than to spend time shooting the shit and spilling some tea with one of my besties. My name is Gary. And over here I have. Hello, everyone. It's Damon. Welcome to the show. Enjoy the drama. <laughs> yes, yes. There is so much drama going on. Mm -hmm. So with that being said, you want to dive right in? Why not? All right. Racers, start your engines, and may the best drag queen win. Hmm. Yes, may the best drag queen win, or whoever we pick. <laughs> you know it, you know it. Oh, queen, queen. <laughs> Got some things to say. Already. Well, oh, I, I feel like other people have things that they want to say as well. Uh, I don't feel that I'm being all that unrealistic. I think there's a fair amount of us who have some shared opinions. That's, that's a very fair point. That is a very, very fair point. There you go. That's good. That's, okay. Yeah. 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 I so, think some opinions have already been said. <laughs> so this is the first section. For those of you that are not familiar with this, this is uh, – uh, we're kind of recap it more of a kind of a discussion or thoughts about what has happened in these particular episodes. If you wanted to hear about like the fashions and the thoughts of like, you know, what happened in the competition and that particular stuff. And like, you want to run down like baby, there are plenty of those shows out there. Go we, somewhere we, else. we used to do that. And we've moved mostly into just expressing our opinions. Cause why we are not important. That's why that's what the internet does. Like, <laughs> Where's the lie? <laughs> <laughs> but the truth is, you and I have done the art of drag. Yeah. I have retired many years ago. You are much yeah. more recent, but we have discussed that many times over. And this is our 151st episode of COLDR. So there you go. There we go. That being said, uh, why don't we get into the first section, which is put the pedal to the metal, baby. We're going to give our overall thoughts in three category areas. The first is called serve. Happens to be a positive thing, something that we enjoyed, we liked, we were uh, pleased by. And the second is, ooh, baby, that's a swerve. And swerve is not a good thing. That is, uh, got to avoid that hazard on the runway or wherever you may be. <clears throat> and then last but not least is nerve. And baby, nerve can be good or can be bad. It can be like, oh, girl, you got nerve. Props to you, mama. Or, oh, baby, what was you thinking? That's. <laughs> or as Rue once said, what the fuck you doing here? <laughs> that. 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 Very part. that. That part. Yeah. So uh, why don't we get into serves first? Who you given or what you given serves for? So I am giving all kinds of serve to Jimbo. Mm. Jimbo, Jimbo, Jimbo. So I, for, for those that don't know, mm -hmm. I'm a petty bitch, and I only watch the, 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 the U.S. season. I don't, I, don't, I don't get into Canada or Mexico or, you know, I don't, I don't watch the other ones. I, I just have it don't have it in me. I don't have the time. I don't have the energy. I just no, no. So I was vaguely familiar with Jimbo because of YouTube, because mm -hmm. it's out there. So seeing her on this season, 
has been quite a surprise. And, you know, if you if you know her and you've been watching her and you're a fan of her, more power to you. This is my first sort of really seeing her in full effect. And I am, I will admit that I am a fan. Mm-hmm. I am enjoying her aesthetic. Um, I'm enjoying what she's putting out there. I'm enjoying the commitment she has to kind of this voluptuous like frame and and very campy drag clown kind of moment Mm -hmm. very odd but not very 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 odd it's just that very odd like spin on everything and i i'm loving it i will i will admit it i'm loving it i'm loving jimbo and i'm loving what she's doing and um the way she's sort of playing this game has been quite nice. Um, she's a spoiler alert. She's our first All Stars queen to have two wins. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's something to be, you know, is interesting to me. I know this is her third time on the show. Um, I don't believe she has won yet. But no, she. Uh, looking at our doc, she was on Canada season one. Mm-hmm. She came in fourth place. Got it. Then she was on UK versus the world, and mm-hmm. she came in seventh place. Got it. Yeah, she went home really early on that season. So. Yeah. I get the and, impression that she kind of pissed some queens off. Mm, yeah, and I can see that, too. And that's, I think, what I'm in, enjoying about her. She's not – while she's <laughs> we'll say, while she's Canadian and nice and what have you, there's a bite. There's definitely a bite to her mm-hmm. that I am definitely seeing and I'm kind of loving and I'm living for it. So props to Jimbo. You get my serves this episode. I, I agree with you. I will say I think she's a refreshing mm-hmm. like ad, uh, addition as a contestant to an all-star season. I know like we kind of discussed in the past like about um, I think it was the Vivian and like, you know, when we add other like stars into an all-star season how we Mm -hmm. feel about the international piece of it but i will be honest i'm the same with you like i only watched the u.s season now i did see i think most of season one of uk because i was visiting someone who was watching it and they were like what do you mean you haven't watched this like they know i like the show and i was like i i ain't got time like my (laughs) life like like it does not revolve around drag race Right. So, like, we used to feel that way, I think, back as the seasons went on and we were watching, like, you know, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Once we hit 10, I think, is when things really started to wind up and spin and out and we got all these other international things. And then the All-Stars was, like, kicking up once every year. And, like, it's exhausting. Yeah, it can be exhausting. And that's sort of the situation that I was dealing with before I joined and she started to watch just – drag race in the u.s i will admit i i know i'm probably missing out on a lot of fabulous drag and fabulous stories and dramas and and tea spilling and all that stuff all over the place i was just watching a um on twitter i was watching a capture from this fight i'm thinking it's from holland Mm. um i'm thinking it's from holland i don't know I, i i couldn't pull it up right now if i wanted to but the idea being like there was this big ass fight about between these two queens and they're not there i mean is it not it's not like knockdown drag out like wigs being pulled off you know but it's a definitely a word for being exchanged Mm -hmm. with some energy and and um urgency well and that might be coming in the next episode because one of the one of the cast members apparently has tea to spill Mm -hmm. and is like ready to like put that out there and i'm like okay this better not be a stunt girl it's not a good look if you're like trying to pull a stunt like if you got honest things to say i'm very interested to see how that plays out but yeah (laughs) so uh that being said yeah i agree like jimbo really has been fun like Mm -hmm. fun to see fun to watch very creative and has no problem talking back to Mama Ru. Right. And I know that that is kind of a forbidden thing in the U.S. Not many people do it. Um, 
But, you know, every once in a blue moon, we get a gem like this. Are you sure? <laughs> now, to be fair, Raja has known Mama Roof for a very long time. So she felt she totally had the ability to say that in that moment in, in the all winter season. Well, she felt uh, <clears throat> she was not being recognized for what she brought. Mm. Yes. So, uh, yeah, no, I agree. It's been it's been good with Jimbo. Mm -hmm. uh, so what so, about you? Well, I have two serves. Um, I'll start with the latter, the Jimbo show. That's what I'm calling it. Like, baby. Like, you know, uh, the va 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 voom big titty, like, like, thing that is part of her aesthetic is amusing me because she is a tall, skinny bitch. So, like, she's sort of, like, turning out this um acid trip warped like if you think of like who's 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 a blonde bombshell with big boobs and everyone primarily goes to dolly parton but dolly parton's tiny so mm -hmm. like jimbo is like this <laughs> tall drink tall of water so to water. speak and so yeah. it's it's very intriguing to see someone that tall because mostly tall women like that have very small chesticles um <laughs> so it, it it's amusing to me that she like has these, you know, and she features them like she does things with them. And so, yes, yes. The Jimbo show has been mm -hmm. pretty uh, amazing in that case. But I also have serves for just episode fun or episode one, the famous forever runway. Oh, yeah. So was... many good looks. Yes. Uh, the, the Queens really, I think, delivered primarily time and time again on. Some of their, I guess in a way, it's supposed to be their best drag, which is sort of ironic because that's what you expect at the end of the whole season. But to mm -hmm. be fair, in traditional style, you don't get to see their final looks, True. where this year there is going to be an element of that because dun, 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 we've introduced the fame games. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure we'll discuss that more later. Um, but I find it uh, interesting that we at least get to see what has been put together as a package right. for all of the contestants. Um, right. But it also requires you to watch Untucked. I'm just saying. Yes, it does. Um, and Untucked has been entertaining. Yes, it has been. <laughs> um, so that being said, why don't we move on to swerves? Uh, woo, baby. Um, <laughs> there is nothing surprising about this one. David, who are you giving the swerve for? Okay. Okay. <laughs> oh. So I am swerving Mrs. Costa Davis's supermarket supermodel look. Mama, this is, this is... I got it. There we go. Mama, this is garbage. Yeah. Like. <laughs> <laughs> so, she admitted that she doesn't sew, because she's, she's not Amish and she's got good credit. I love the joke. Right, but... right, right. Prop, props to MKD for yes. one of the best, funniest response lines about the sewing, like, like requirement. I was right. like, I was howling when she said that. I was like, oh, okay, I see you. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right, and absolutely, that's a thing. I, I appreciated that, and I'm happy that she did that. But, ma'am, um, <laughs> when the when the when 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 the idea is like supermarkets, like I don't again, I don't think you understood the assignment. First of all, um, number two, if you've been a fan of the show or watch any of the show you know mm -hmm. you know that putting everything in the kitchen sink on a garment garment being in quotation marks um is usually a a a a killer of of the runway it is almost always a killer um but at the same time I just needed you to edit. <laughs> I needed an edit. There was so, 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 so much going on here. And you said it was a birthday party, but no, 
it was kind of a birthday party and a quinceanera and a pinata party and a and a and a festival <laughs> and and a flower show and everything else all kind of like mixed wrapped up mixed into like in, into a big fucking ball of like bullshit so um i just I just, I, I don't know where you were going. And because there's there's nothing to, like, pinpoint on, really, <laughs> it just feels like it's coming from every direction at once. And that's kind of my problem. I just, I need queens. If you don't know how to sew, if you don't know how to sew, at least learn how to edit. You could have mm. very easily, if you had done one or two of colors of those of those of those streamer things or whatever they were are remove 50% of the stuff that you <laughs> hot glued to that to the corset are not had a fucking had a flower just some something something needed to be removed or changed or edited i would have preferred if you had done the hat the birthday cake that you held in your hand. I don't know why you did that, because it didn't make sense. Um, that could have just been a fucking hat. You wouldn't have needed this flower hat. You could have just put that on your head and done anything else but what you did. And <laughs> it just... Oh, ma'am. It just... And, and the big part and the shady part, the shadiest part of all has always been no one is saying anything to her. Nobody, not a damn queen in this house, not a fucking production staff member. Nobody is just like, maybe you should lay off on the glue. Are you high? Is what's going on? <laughs> like, something, something is happening, and just stop. Please stop immediately. Like, someone, I just, just somebody say something. But again, we know it's a show, and we know it's production, and we know that more than likely. It was just like someone's gonna have to crash and burn this episode, so it might as well be the person who has a really, really, really bad outfit. So <laughs> I don't necessarily disagree with what you had to say. Um I will say this. Did you watch Fashion Photo Review? Yes, I did. So shocker of all things. Uh, first of all, if you're not watching it on YouTube, Carrie Colby is the guest with Raja for the fashion photo review on WoW Presents on YouTube. And so I watched them today and I was gobsmacked that Raja and Carrie both like liked the outfit. Wait, wait. It, but it's so funny because they justify it. Raja gives it a two. Carrie Colby gives it a shoot and right. Raja nearly fell off her damn chair. <laughs> but my favorite thing about it was Carrie's justification basically was like, this is the most acid trip in reality thing I have ever seen. And that's why it's a shoot because she just can't comprehend what happened and that it exists, that it was made, that like you had the biggest balls ever to wear it on the runway because it was guaranteed to get the golden boot or all the golden boot awards. Like it is just, yeah, it is just, and that's what cracked me up so much is that they were like, ma'am, 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 Mrs. Mrs. <laughs> Mrs. Mrs. What? Con Mrs. Davis, what the fuck is going on here? <laughs> what, like, what? what is this? I, I, and, <sighs> and, and I was so shocked with the shoot. I get it. <laughs> I get it. Mm, I don't necessarily love it, but I get it. Like, you are so, like, how, like, again, like, how fucking dare you bring this on the fucking <laughs> runway? But here we go. Like, Right. Kudos to you, Mama, for, 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 for taking like the biggest fucking balls, tucking them into your panties, and just like walking down the runway with the. She could have had him hanging out. You never know. I you mean... couldn't see. I mean, the volume of that outfit. <laughs> she probably was letting the dingleberries get all the air. I mean. 
<laughs> Ooh, no sheep out of dough. I mean, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, no, I, I like, and I was just thinking as we were talking, I was like, what a wild world this season would have been if Raja or Carrie had been like judging and they were like fighting with the rest of the judges and they were like, no, ma'am, like she no. needs to stay. She needs to stay because that, that, that is actually like far more creative than what some of these other queens did. We're not saying it's fashion. We're not saying it's good. We're just saying like <laughs> it was like it was something. Oh man. Yeah. Man. Yeah. Oh man. Mm. That just was something. Anyway, with that, <laughs> Gary, what about you? Um, oh, my swerve, baby. Oh. Episode two. RDR live. Uh huh. I'm sorry. Like, uh-huh. like, I sort of had high hopes, mm-hmm. and at the end, I was like, "Wow, you, you, y'all really did that. You, um, so you, <laughs> you delivered SNL, huh? And it felt like when I watch SNL, I was like, "Well, that was a thing." <laughs> I'm sorry, but like, first of all, the naming convention is just a mess. I I like listened to this other podcast, All Right, Mary, and they went on this whole riff about how problematic the name was. S N L Saturday Night Live, R D R Live. Like, I mean, like, like they went on this whole thing. Anyway, so like that was sort of a mess. Um, like yeah, the whole thing was just it. It was wild, and yet it wasn't technically live. Because it no. was all recorded skits. Mm-hmm. So I was like, huh? And then yeah. word got out because somebody spilled the tea at Roscoe's viewing party that Candy got like five takes of the yeah. opening. You know who spilled the tea, right? The Come same on. one that has more tea to spill, apparently. The one that spilled the tea. Ooh, where's my episode two? Oh, Lord. Oh, there you are. Yeah, the girl that went home. Oh, oh, that episode. oh, I thought it was the other one. Okay. No, they still went home. Yeah. So, yeah, that was kind of wild to me. Oops, that, was that like, a spoiler? <laughs> not really. Um, <laughs> and I say that with a lot of love in my heart. She's a great queen. She's very beautiful. She's very talented. But people got to go home. Like, we ain't messing. This is, this is not yeah. all winners. Right. Right. Like, I, so, oh, girl. Um. <laughs> I I watched episode two, and I will I will give you like a, an example because I'm looking at my pad right now. So episode one, I you know I take notes. I always take notes for everyone. Episode one has a page and a half mm-hmm. of notes because it was the first episode. A page mm-hmm. and a third. I'll put it like that. Um. I put the untucks in the second, the two thirds of the, the one thing for both episode one and two. Mm-hmm. Episode one is half of this page. Mm-hmm. Episode two, I mean, episode two is just half of this page. Mm-hmm. It is half of this page. There is nothing starred because normally I will star things that I'm like, oh, that's really cute and fun or whatever. <clears throat> there is um, nothing really meaningful, meaningfully. Oh, wait, there's one thing. It was Bobby Moynihan because it's Bobby Moynihan. That was the only thing. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I started that. So excuse me for not seeing my actual star. It must not have been had that much of an impression on me. <laughs> um, yeah. It's just, it, I agree with you. It was an interesting, it was an effort. <laughs> it was an effort. Was it funny mm, kind of one skit out of four four segments was funny and that was Jimbo and Jessica <laughs> with a with a guest starring role by MKD as this like wackadoo lesbian like yeah. Mama, like that was what I was expecting for everything. Like I wanted that kind of caliber and it just wasn't there. And I was like, okay. Yeah. 
it just gets it, it's very weird to me. So okay, so so hey, um, new listeners and people who are born in two thousands or whatever, um, who may not have who may, may not know the legacy of Saturday Night Live. Hmm. Um, I love '90s Saturday Night Live up until about. 98 I'm thinking if I'm remembering maybe 99 um I love the show I used to watch it every Saturday night um I have it in recent years yeah and I haven't seen a lot of stuff some things have been good don't get me wrong there's stuff that is funny that has come out of the new seasons but it's lost its magic in a way I will say I think that there's a while it has its appeal, don't get me wrong, it has its appeal. Mm-hmm. I think that there's something that is lacking in regards to like comedy um, writing in ways. And has there been like great roles and great people coming out of it? Absolutely. But um, for me personally, it's not as good as it used to be. Right. And this parody of it felt even worse. Yeah, like I feel like because the the big thing, like I get, I don't under like I'll put it like this. I'll say like this is the nicest way I know how. Why did we have a host who gave a monologue, mm-hmm. but that host didn't do anything else? Fair point, because the reality is the host should have been in all the skits. Right. The whole point of the host is that they're like in everything. Right. Um. And you get, but the the ho- the point of the host is not the host is not to give the monologue, but the monologue is there. Um, I think there were some choices made in regards to uh, casting that were not good. I think that there was some some mm-hmm. moments that should have been done differently. Jimbo and and Jessica, like I said, I think they were like you said were probably the strongest of the of the skits. Mm-hmm. Um, the Alexis and and Darian, like Jersey girl, what have you, was would be a good second, um, mm. but mostly because they had the they had the like shock uh, shock quote unquote of like the real Michelle Visage showing up like that was kind of the fun part. Well, and they were Bring kind back. of right. They were also kind of smart. Uh, my apologies for interrupting. Yeah. That they took previous skits that are known on SNL and kind of blended them together. Mm-hmm. So the way of the classic uh, Linda Richman coffee talk, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. which was a lot of that. And then there's another yeah. one and I can't think of what it was, but so they basically blended that and took like a template and applied their own thing to it, which is why I think that one was understandable mm-hmm. and everybody was okay with it, even though it wasn't uproariously funny. Yeah. 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 And that's it. That's all. That's all I have to say. I, I just I thought it was I thought it could have been so much better and it wasn't. Yeah. And I'm disappointed and sad. Yeah, that's why I think it's a swerve. I was like, uh mm-hmm. yeah, and so a part of me's like, please don't do it again. Don't do it again. Don't do it again. Please don't. <laughs> please stop immediately. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You ready to move on to the next part mm-hmm. of this section? So uh, let's talk about Nerve. David, I see you got a couple of things listed. Yeah. I'm very intrigued to which direction these are going. <laughs> so the first one I have is the balloon pop. Okay. And that was from this most recent episode, mm-hmm. Put Them in Teens, the Screen Queens episode. And I just think of, I, I give it Nerve because it was a really fun, like, they've done this so many times before with the balloon popping and all this stuff. This, I think they took it up a level. So I'm giving the nerve. They took a lot of nerve to bring something that has always been done, but they had a lot of fun with it. Mm-hmm. Um, I enjoyed um, Marco um, <laughs> just ramming the fuck out of Queen and um, and the other one too, but mostly Marco. Um, <laughs> is it Marco? Bruno? Bruno. Got, you know, whatever. The big, tall Amazonian yeah. drink of water uh, that apparently uh-huh. has a – Baby arm? Yes. Um, yeah. Bruno. Marco. Jim. Don. <laughs> Listen to you. Do you have a name? Does it matter? Not really. <laughs> it's not going to matter anyway. I'm, <laughs> I'm just objectifying uh, you. So. 
<laughs> Why you need a name? You there, sir. Yes. Mm, daddy. Um, whatever. Like, yeah. But absolutely. Just I thought it was amazing. I thought it was fun. Um, I really did love it. I did really and love it. Um, I loved Heidi. <laughs> Follow it all out. I oh, I know. She she was delivering the drama, Mama. She was right. like falls on the floor. I mean, just like yeah, yeah I was like, there just you picked go. Up. Yeah, like it was good. It was good. Bruno, yes, thank you. <laughs> um, and then my other like nerve has to deal with the um fame games and mm. um I don't like it. I don't like it. I'm just going to say this right now. I don't okay. like it. I like it most. I will say I give it points because it gives the queens who have been eliminated, like, we're going to show all of these fucking garments. Mm -hmm. Like, I paid the coin. I dropped the coin to get these garments made or I spent the time and energy getting it made myself. Whatever you did, like, this is now giving you an opportunity to, like, definitely show that off and do all those things. And then you have this opportunity now to plead your case to the audience at large mm -hmm. and, and make this whole appeal. Like I get it. I get it. I get that. But one, it feels rather forced. It just doesn't feel like it's, it's necessary. Yes. You get this queen of the fame games, crown and and you get like fifty thousand dollars and and everything but you know to be blunt um um jessica wild just made 35k mm -hmm. literally 3500 like 35k by winning last episode or episode three right so like it just, it feels. All she has to do is do that twice. Right. And if she doesn't win overall or the Fame Games, she wins more than what the Fame Games like, title is going to give you. Right, exactly. And it just, that's, I think that's part of it that bothers me, mm. part of it anyway. I just... And and again, I think I, I'm not the biggest fan of that. It's audience, you know, vote, whatever. But again, I don't really want production's involvement with it. Mm. I want it to kind of stay in this sort of. I'll be very intrigued to see how the voting piece works when it comes to July and it goes active. Right. That's will... the part that I raise an eyebrow about. Yeah. And I'm, not, I'm hating that we don't have all these details. I hate that it's I hate that it's in untucked. Um that you have to watch Untucked. You have to watch it to get this idea. What are we taking out of Untucked to give time for this to go on? I mean, no offense, y'all. The show's on fucking Paramount Plus. You don't have to stick to the like hour format. You can be as long as you want to be. Mm. Like it, it, it's not a big deal for an episode to be longer, so you can add this element to it. But whatever. Um, I just, I give it, I'm giving it nerve because I'm kind of like, how, who has the nerve to do this? Because I don't think this is really going to be this amazing, wonderful thing that they're, they're trying to make it out as. It doesn't even feel like a consolation prize. It feels like a cop out. Mm. But that's my opinion. <laughs> I, I'm mixed about it. I'm not, I guess I'm not viewing it 100% the way you are. I think you make incredibly valid points. I feel like at first I was like, oh, this is interesting. This is different. And I kind of got happy and excited that the contestants get to show all their looks from the entire season, regardless of when they go home. So I was like, oh, good. Uh, although it does feel awkward mm -hmm. when you're watching Untucked and you see a queen walk the literal runway in the look that they brought and my mind immediately goes to the logistics because i'm like oh well when did they do that like and how did they pull that off like so are all the eliminated queens discovering that they're eliminated because they're being corralled together 
Like, so when the episode is done, are they being brought in, like, when the rest of the cast has left? And then, like, are they only one at a time coming into the building and then working going on the mm. runway? Or are they all being, like, are they just letting each other know, like, who's been eliminated so they actually get to see each other a little bit backstage and see what they brought that didn't, like, get to be seen in the regular episode? Like, I don't know. That's the way my brain goes. I'm like, there's a yeah. lot of logistical things. But yeah, it also feels a little haunting to watch them walk the runway in their outfit, knowing that they weren't on the stage with the judges there or the rest of the queens or whatever. So it feels a little hollow. Like, mm -hmm. and I just don't know how I feel about that right yeah. now. I'm like, okay, yeah, that's a thing. And, and some of the looks have been really good. Like, so I, I'm happy to see that those are working, but I, yeah, I agree the whole thing. I'm like, mm, I don't know. Like, is this as bad as the chocolate bar thing? <laughs> no, but it's not uh, also that spectacular as a yeah. concept. So, yeah, it's there. We'll see how it plays out. Yeah, exactly. That's sort of my feeling about it. We'll see how it plays out. Oh, Gary, what about you? You've got a couple as well. Well, uh, so kind of like you, um, well, I'll start with the <laughs> I'll start with the latter first. Ooh, mm -hmm. MKD. Girl, <laughs> ma'am. <laughs> We've already kind of discussed this. The nerve. The nerve of like going out there and wearing that outfit this last time. There is a part of me that like applauds you, like standing ovation for like for the nerve it took to do that. And yet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, you don't have the option to say that you were potentially medicated in some direction as <laughs> as a reason for why you had the nerve to do that. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, okay, like this. Also, I want to give props to, to Mrs. Kasha Davis for the nerve to say some things that ma many seasons now the audience would be like uh get the fuck out of here mm. because she made statements and the moment she made the statement on the on the stage i was like okay, okay. i was like she knows she is not oblivious and she is not going to attempt to feign that uh -huh. like she doesn't know what's going to happen right so i found that very interesting that she was just going to own it and be like i think this was a wonderful opportunity i am so happy that i'm back like the moment she kind of started on that track i was like "Ooh, girl everybody's like bye bye <laughs> see you later <laughs> bye felicia like you know they they wanted nothing more from her and at the same right. time i was like it really takes like big ones to know that you are D O N done. Like there is nothing left. You will not be continuing on. And she knew that. And she wasn't going to allow them to have this edit to be like that. She was going to attempt to continue on. And when she talked to yeah. Jimbo, I was like, okay, she's, she's making it. She's giving Jimbo the complete option to make it possible for her to leave. Yeah. And, and not feel bad about it in any way, shape, or form. And I was like, yeah. okay, girl. Like, she's like, I ain't gonna, ca I ain't gonna get no more check. Like, that's all right. Like, I, yeah. I got things to do, places to go, whatever. So yeah. I found that I found and, that very interesting. Yeah, I think it's it's very true. I agree, absolutely. That she like, it's one of these things where maybe just because of her longevity, or or maybe just she knows this game well enough mm -hmm. that she was like. This wasn't my week. I knew I sucked. I know this was terrible. I know, I know, like, I, I have this knowledge. This isn't going to fly. Right. And so help me God, I don't give a fuck. And therefore, I'm going to go. Right. But I'm going on almost, in a, I mean, not to the same extreme effect of, like, vanilla creme. But, like, I'm if I'm going out, I'm letting you know I'm, I'm fine. I'm good. Like, this, right. is, this is, this is, this is, this is, this is. This is a drop in the bucket of 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 me, and right. I'm going to move on and be 
fabulous, but right. ma'am, like I I and maybe she knew going into it because she knew there would be a sewing challenge. I I agree with thing. you. Yeah, and she was like, "This isn't going to be it." And since this was a sewing challenge, like, okay, I'm out. Right. She might have thought to herself, maybe the the design challenge will come in episode five or episode six, and that'll get me at least halfway. And maybe like it won't be unconventional materials. Maybe we'll be surprised. It'll be something you know that's much more functional, like you know, yeah. bolts of fabric or whatever. Yeah. Which was not the case. Yeah. So yeah. So nerve nerve to MKD for all of it, like to the positive and to the not positive. Yeah. Um, I also have one other thing. Uh, nerve, 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 nerve. Heidi in closet on the runway. She has been bringing it. Absolutely. And. Uh, that moment in Untucked when she is over <laughs> yeah yeah that 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 kind of that kind of says a lot of it right yes fact she was to call back to a previous Heidi moment, I think this is what was running through her head. Fuck you, fuck you, and fuck you! Yeah. Mama, she was teed off. Yeah. And I kind of don't blame her. I don't either. Like, like I, yeah. I, think, I think everybody, uh, like, globally understands the dis- service that was delivered to Heidi and closet by having her not be in the top for her looks on the runway. Yes. Like the milk look. Are you kidding me? The white handprint of milk on her ass on the skirt. Like I got goosebumps talking about it. Like and the strawberry, like, yes. <sighs> Like, I was just like, she's in the top. She's got to be in the top. Like, and she wasn't? Oh. And then she's like, I'm leaving. Like, I just, and I was like, like I oh, 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 okay. She ain't okay. She is not okay. Mm -mm. She was not okay. No. No, ma'am. Mm -mm. No. <laughs> oh. Who else was so sad up? She, uh, but, yeah, yeah, that was Kahana, James, and Alexis. So, hey, everybody, welcome to uh, what the fuck is going on with Damon? Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm kind of, I just want to, like, I'm looking at everything here, and I'm kind of looking at what I, what is going on, and I just am, I was floored. I was floored when I look at the safe queen. Johanna, James, and Alexis. I will get those three. I can see why they were safe. I saw why they were safe. They did some really good looks. They were kind of good, but they were, you know, in the middle, what have mm -hmm. you. Yeah, that makes sense. The only look that I wasn't 100% a fan of for Heidi mm -hmm. was the, the look that she made herself. But, but, taking into account the details, the elements that she used, how she made it, what she did with it, mm -hmm. like those are check mark, check mark, check mark. Like she put all of this effort into this the outfit and did something very different and creative and amazing and wonderful. And that got beat by Lala Ree's basic, like, one piece or maybe two piece like skirt shirt dress i have thoughts <laughs> first enough props to lala Ree for the glow up like from the bag look the most infamous like 
like golden beard of all time Fair. Uh, until MKD. Um, like, <laughs> like the fact that she did that, I'm sorry. Like I was, I was wowed by the simplicity and the editing of just mm-hmm. the, sim- like just the, the sheer, like, like I admit there's a lot of like, mama, what did you do? And yet, and yet she like, in my opinion, delivered amazingly by being bold and going without hair. And the reason mm-hmm. why I say bold is because she's got a beautiful head. Like, and there's nothing wrong with being bald. And I was like, look at that. And the legs. Yeah. I was like, wow. I was like, she really just kind of like was like, I'm just going to feature myself. And like, mm-hmm. and honestly, like, it didn't look to me like a bad design was it simple absolutely yeah Yeah. and that's the thing where i think if people want to critique it they can but there's a part of me that's like are you going to be mad about the fact that it's simple and it didn't take her very much time maybe Mm. anywho it just again but having said that i just think that there is something to be said in regards to the disservice i absolutely feel like yeah heidi should have been at least in the top because of all the legendary looks she's the only one that went um milk man like right and has something that was fun and unique and different and a draggy spin on it 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 just it all kind of worked for me yeah um the her strawberry look was so amazing like so amazing the pant that looked like the actual like meat of a strawberry mm-hmm. with like sequin or crystal showing off the 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 seeds of a strawberry it, it, it nah, just amazing. Chef kiss, everything, yeah. um, from hair and all that stuff. And her 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 final look was, was good. Like I said, it wasn't my favorite, but it was good. When you think about it, it was really good. I'm wondering if better do Jessica. Uh, uh, oh 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 oh. <laughs> So here's the thing. It just occurred to me. Do you think there's a psychological game being played? Because we've seen it before. Mm. It's the Sasha Colby meet and greet and we're all just waiting in line. (laughs) She can't win every episode. Now, can she? Mm. And I wonder if because she came so strong out the gate in these first episodes, they're like, we can't. Give it all to her. Mm. And yet, Jimbo notably is one of RuPaul's favorites. Mm-hmm. And Jessica Wilde is being given the edit that she's one of RuPaul's, like, pets. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, what what are we doing here? Because mm. potentially those might be the top three. Mm. I mean, it remains to be seen. Fair. That's a fair point. That's but, a very fair point. you know, yeah. Um, we shall see. Yeah. I mean, like, there's there's a couple more. I'm looking at the cast list. There's, like, two or three that I would, I would kind of expect to be next to not make it. And we'll see how that plays out. Where that where that goes, right. but yeah, I really I really feel that 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 was just such a huge disservice to Heidi, and that mm-hmm. she's had such a glow up, and she's been delivering it. And I'm like, okay, I I don't know what's happening here. I think there's some some production shenanigans or something. I don't know, but there's that. Hmm. Whew. So with that said, do you want to move on to the next segment? Absolutely. <laughs> okay, Chia Gun. <laughs> All 
All right, mamas, it's time. It's time for the snaps and the eye rolls, a.k.a. the highs and the lows of these episodes. These are the things that we thought were the hits and the misses. These are the things that stood out to us um, that we really wanted to bring attention to. I am so intrigued. Damon, what are you giving snaps for? So actually, I'm giving snaps to this interesting cast Mm -hmm. of people. Looking through this cast, there is, there was a lot of, like, I know, the nicest way I know how. Who is she? Um, Oh! (laughs) (laughs) Listen to you. Who is she? Being a little shady, but again, um, I... There, there, there's a lot of queens that ha- weren't on the show for long periods of time. We'll put it like this. I think Katie is one of the few exceptions who made it up to the top. Um, maybe a couple more. Um, yeah, I mean, Candy was a runner-up, and then mm-hmm. next would be Jimbo in fourth, Darian in fourth. Right. And then we got a, a fifth with Alexa and a sixth with Heidi, uh, and then... Yeah, we are going further down. 10, 11, yeah. 12, 13, 14 yeah. kind of places. Yeah, and that's and that's fair. You know, it's been we had queens that have gone that went home like in the first episode. We had mm-hmm. Nisha and 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 James and and we had um you know Monica who went home very early. I mean, yes, she went home very early in this season too, but it's just one of those things where the like I was really excited when they announced the cast and I saw the kind of, you know, entrance looks and what have you. I really enjoyed it, and I'm enjoying this season in regards to what they're doing. And that's why I'm kind of giving the snaps props to, I guess, production for creating this cast. Um, it's I'm intrigued in a sense that I kind of want to see where this all, how the dominoes fall, as mm-hmm. it were. Um, and unfortunately, honestly, that's about it. Like, I want to know who's going to, like, get all the way to the top. Right, right. Yeah, that's me. That's fair. I mean, I, I agree with you. I was excited. There's a lot of personalities. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's some we haven't seen in a while. Mm-hmm. And so I was interested to see what was going to be, you know, brought to the show. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think I've been disappointed by anybody's package so far. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. Okay. And yet, uh, I haven't been wowed mm. by this season. Like, the season is just there for me. Mm. And that's sort of disappointing, you know? Um, yeah. I, 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 and I think it goes back to our whole fatigue thing. Like, we spent years waiting for the first All-Stars. And then we waited almost, I think, four more years for the second All-Stars. And then it wasn't quite two years for the third one. Uh, and then it's just been year after year after year. And that's where you, I know you and I have discussed it before. It's like, you don't have to do it. And rumor yeah. has it that the reason they got this cast together is because other people were not interested and bowed out and declined. Like that, you know, World of Wonder came forward and was like, we would love you to be a part of this. And some queens were like, uh, no. no. Like and, and and so it's interesting to see how some queens are like, no, I got a tour. I got to get, you know, I got to make some coin. I got to pay my debts. Like, I got things to yeah. do. I ain't jumping right back in. Right. And other queens are like, I don't need to do it. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's very true. And that's been the sort of, I think, flaw of how they've been doing things here in the U.S. with these, like, constant, like, half a year you know, seasons of like drag race and drag race all stars. Yeah. And is it is it the fatigue per, per, perhaps that is making everything go or is it just the overabundance? And I think it's a bit mm. of the overabundance. Yeah. You know, a queen doesn't necessarily need all stars to relaunch a career when they've not been on the show for when they've been on when they've when they've 
not been on the show in like a year or two. Like they they're still getting that high from their season because they're still kind of known. There's still videos out there of their seasons and them doing stuff and the funny parts or the good parts or the great, you know, the you know the laughs and the cries and what have you. Like all of that is kind of still fresh in minds. Is it mm-hmm. immediately in your mind? Probably not. Right. But on that same token though, one of the things that has happened in recent years with like WoW presents and, and RuPaul's drag race, especially on like YouTube and you know, Twitter, is they've now have this digestible ability. You know, you can be everywhere. So a queen can be kind of like all over the place for you know their season and beyond because those videos are still gonna still be up. Um it was funny the other day. Um, I got a YouTube, you know, recommended of someone that has edited episodes of Untucked from season seven. And just being like, oh, yeah, like watching the episodes and being like, or was it season seven or season six? Either way, I think it was six. It was it was it was Bob's. Um, just been like, oh. Like that was kind of fun to like watch and see some of the fun stuff that happened and the fun and laughs and things like that. But that's available now, you know. Uh-huh. It's it's not going away. So queens from that season that I probably maybe have quote unquote forgotten um, are still relevant. Uh-huh. Um, so having that, there's not really a need to be on All Stars anymore. Well, and this, I mean, this is one of the things about RuPaul's Drag Race is, like, it is a launching pad to the next chapter of your career if right. you want it to be. Right. And those that took it seriously and really applied themselves and have, like, distinct things to offer have been successful. Right. And are continuing on and doing that thing. Um and I think like this, the show has been a blend for many years of, like, star, like, glazed, like, oh my god, I'm here, and it's RuPaul's Drag Race, and isn't this magic and whatever, um, and I say that as like one flavor because I feel like those queens aren't aware of the reality, mm. like, girl, this is a game show, it's a contest, yeah. like, like you know. Like, yeah, there's some magic to it, but at the same time, it's like, you realize this is all fake, right? (laughs) So there's that. And then there's some that, like, have understood and mastered the concept of the game and where to go with it. Um, Mm -hmm. And some that bring a lot of personality because they know that that's a piece of how you play. Mm -hmm. Um, This is Isabel Brooks. Um, (laughs) Mistress. Uh oh! Speaking of, did you watch the unt or the pit stop with her and Bianca? Mm-hmm. Girl, girl, mm-hmm. talk about two mm-hmm. juggernauts going head to head! Holy cow, uh-huh. man, that was something else. Y'all should watch yeah. that. Go on YouTube, yeah. watch it. It's it's wild, right? Um, yeah. So I mean, like, like, so, the, like, we're fifteen seasons in now, right? And eight seasons of All Stars. Like, you really are bringing different things. So yeah, like, this cast is very interesting. Yeah. Um, and, and it is kind of... pretty heavy weighted with earlier exiting mm-hmm. individuals. Yeah. And your point kind of makes sense that because we all know the, the curse, I will, and I will call the curse of being on Drag Race. Mm-hmm. You are put in a limelight, you're put in a spotlight, and you have a public that will either love you or hate you. Mm-hmm. And when they hate you, they definitely make it known. And right, and that can be the you know flaw, curse, what have you, of doing the show again, of coming back on. If you've lived through some shit and and you're kind of finally maybe letting it go, and then ring a ding a ding, you get a call from Wow saying, "Hey, we want you to come back." You might be like, mm, "I'm good. Like, right. I'm still like healing from the scars of my last season. That right. I don't really need to like." Like sit there and just reopen those wounds. So yeah, no, I think that's fair. Mm-hmm. Well, anyway, with that being said, how about you? 
Um, I want to give snaps. I kind of already mentioned earlier, Heidi's glow up. Like, baby, from when her season when she was on originally to now. Like, I've been following Heidi. I've been listening to her podcast with her and um, Jada Essence Hall. Mm-hmm. Hall and Closet, their podcast is so much fun. Um, they are just, like, two goofy gals. And I really appreciate how Heidi's, like, I she moved to L.A., Um, like she definitely has, like, she's just cultured herself and really turned herself from a community, uh, I don't mean to be say this disparagingly, like country queen Mm -hmm. into somebody who's like learned so much about how to change their art form and like, it is delivering on it and, and, and. This woman has, like, a a merch affiliation that is still blowing my mind. She and Willem and Manila Luzon joined up together Mm -hmm. with, I think it's Flesh Jack, (laughs) for a line of sex, like, toys, like, items. And Heidi in Closet's mouth with her tooth gap is a legitimate toy. Have you seen this thing? I'm taking it you haven't like No, I've seen it. Okay. I have seen it. I am a little I was I was sitting here like is this April Fool's Day? Is this Right, this, right, right. This, so this, many people real? were like this has to be a gag. Like this has right. to be. And it's legit. Willem's butthole as a as a sex toy is legit. Manila lubes on. Like her whole thing is that it's lubricants that like tickled me to no end and also disappointed me purely because I was like, oh, she a classy lady. She like, Mm-mm. you ain't getting no. any of my anatomy into, <laughs> into this gig, baby, but you'll get my name. Right, right. Yeah, it's it's wild that she like did this thing and I was like, collect the coins, honey, collect the coins. Like, you know, for your gap and she's totally playing into it. Um, I'm glad to see that I think she's stepping away from her new merch like logo Mm -hmm. because baby that got a little annoying in the first couple episodes because it was on everything i was like okay okay we get it we get it we get it (laughs) like so yeah like i I, i'm i'm just so like pleased yeah yeah that she's like really stepping it up um and i think that's why i was alongside her in the pissosity when she was just not being recognized that's fair like i was i was i will own i was a little I was not a little. I was very like, what? What the fuck? Yeah. What the fuck? Yeah. Hmm. So that being said, uh, ooh, eye rolls, David. <laughs> you got some explaining to do. Not really. Someone else does. <laughs> Someone else does. So I put down for my eye rolls. Um, what you doing, Alexis? Um. Girl, um, what's going on? Mm-hmm. Like, who hurt you? Um, <laughs> like something's some. There is a. I I was really like of the queens that were coming back. I was really happy to see Alexis because I liked her on her season for the most part. Mm-hmm. Um, there was a bit of just snootiness to her, but. I was like, oh, she's, you know, I get it. Like, she's kind of cute. She's kind of cute as a boy. Don't get me wrong. I will say that now. Um, I'm not liking this hairstyle that she's got right now, but that's just me. Um, <laughs> I have I have questions. Um, but with that being said, I am not liking this gameplay. Mm. I'm not liking how this is happening. Mm-hmm. I re- Like, the biggest thing, the biggest issue I had was from the very first episode, the first episode of Untucked, we get this moment. Monica Beverly Hills is having this like, like breakdown. Right, right. Break Existential down. Right, absolutely. She and is having a mental health episode. Right. She she's just having she's deal, having a moment and yeah. and you take this moment to out of the fucking blue, like have this like, oh, I'm so happy to be here and I'm so glad that you all accepted me and no 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 and blah 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 and I was just like, girl, what the fuck? What the fuck? 
like Monica is still in tears, Mm -hmm. like on the couch, not even like 10 feet from you. Mm-hmm. But you have to like turn this around and make this all about you and have this like kind I mean, I get that it was a quote unquote positive thing where you're like, I'm so happy to be here and so happy to be accepted and all that stuff, but not right now. Not when like Monica is sitting right. over here in the bottom two, worried for her her longevity on the show. Right. What like what the fuck? And now fast forward to this recent episode. <clears throat> um, did you did you have to put the pedal to the metal and drive right over like James and and Darian with that bus? Like did you, like did you did you did you enjoy that? Cause, Mama, that was that was just what the hell? Cause again, you have ability in this game. You have agency in this game. Mm-hmm. You could have said something at any point in time about this idea that you weren't the biggest fan of and you weren't sure wasn't going to work, was going to work. But you went along with it anyway. Mhm. Okay? You went along with it. You went along with it. You did the, you did the thing. You mm-hmm. did all the stuff. We had other conversations. We're sitting there going through it like, you know, storyboarding it. We're sitting here um, recording it. Like, you had so many opportunities to have been like, mm, I don't know about this. But you didn't. And then when the co- time comes and you're in the bottom with your, your your girls, your castmates, your teammates, took a, took a moment to just like, well, I didn't come up with it. It wasn't my idea. I wasn't a fan of it. Oh, it was Darian's idea. It was her. All her. And I'm sorry, Alexis. I love you. I've appreciated you. I'm feeling very much like I'm not seeing, and it's going to sound really shady, I'm not seeing anything unique from you. I do not, in this moment, sitting here, we're four episodes in, I do not see anything that I could go, that's Alexis. Mm. So I, I I feel um that your time is running short. Because I need to see something, especially now, that mm-hmm. repeats. And I'm not gonna see I don't think I'm gonna see it. Mm-hmm. I don't think I'm gonna see it. So Yeah. What 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 the fuck, Lexus? What you doing, Alexis? I think there's something that kind of sums it up. We all have choices. Some of us make the wrong ones. <laughs> read the room, girl. Read the room. She didn't read the room when, like, Monica Beverly Hills is having an existential crisis. And she doesn't read the room when she says on the main stage the shit that she says. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I mean, I was gobsmacked when she opened her mouth. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I was also gobsmacked that nobody called her on it. Right. I And, and again, maybe. Like, and, and there's a part of me that's like, oh, is everyone trying to, like, not have all the, the internet come for them? Is that what that is? Like, why you didn't speak up and, and say to her? Oh, now you're saying something? Now you're going to bring this up? Now this is an issue? Like, what amazing timing you have, Alexis. Huh. Did you go to school for drama? Because you're, you're definitely delivering it right now. Like, did you put the, like, the cold cream on your eyes so you could cry? Give you a little tear just in that moment? Like, <gasps> I just don't understand why we did this. I just, <sighs> I felt so overwhelmed. Girl. <laughs> it's it's messy. It's messy. Like she's and, and the thing is she's a talented queen. Yes. And and she has skills. And she got a ass. Like 
That wedding dress, like, thing. Okay, first of all, everybody knew what was coming. You turned the corner of the runway, you come walking down, and I was like, her ass is hanging out. Her ass is hanging out. Her ass is hanging out. Like, her ass is hanging out. That's a guarantee what that, I mean, given the theme, and then she turns, and I was like, oh! Her ass is hanging out. Not her ass in pads and tights. Her ass. Like, she pulled a detox. Uh Uh-huh. There was a part of me that was like, if I'm not, if I zoom in, I think I'm going to see the coconuts that go with that. Like, I was like, girl, girl. So, like, the, like they're props for that. that right, 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 cool. right. And then she pulls this stuff. She does uh-huh. this thing. And I was like, oh, my God. Like, you have beauty, but not brains. Like, what is happening in this moment? What are you doing? No, 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 I no, no. I even know. Like, I was, yeah. Like, absolutely. That's how mm. I felt. I was like, what is going on here? Yeah. Like, and there's a part of me that's like, you're not dumb. You are not dumb. You are not exactly. a bimbo. Like, Uh you know what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And you could kind of fade some stuff, but I don't think she realizes that she probably sealed her fate. Because the rest of the queens are going to know. And so now we've got four gone, and we have the remaining queens, and I'm Mm -hmm. looking at this list, and I don't see any of them looking at her for what she did and seeing that as a redeeming quality. Mm-hmm. The whole rest of them, Lala, Candy, Kahana, Jimbo, Jessica, James, and Heidi, I don't see a single one of them saying, oh, that was good gamesmanship. Mm-hmm. I don't see any of them seeing that. If anything, I think a lot of them are like, the one thing you don't do is throw your teammates under the bus. You actually try to defend what you did. Yeah. You take the lumps. You say. Yeah. It was not executed in the way I thought we were going to do it. Yeah. Like, whatever. It, like, there there was... are other ways to to recognize that it was not the best. Yes. This, there and was that's a better it. spin on this, um, on this situation than, well, it was Darian's idea. Like, like so many different ways you could have taken it. That was, a, that was a you saving your ass that's hanging out. That's, yep. that's what that was. Like where where you feeling vulnerable because your butt was out? Was that what it was? Like was there a draft? Mm-hmm. Did did the Chipotle lunch not sit well with you? Like, <laughs> sorry, that was so crass. Anyways, that was so un- uncalled for. Anyways, oh, I'm leaving anyway. it in. I'm leaving it in. There you go. Leave it in. <sighs> so, ma'am, what about you? What do you? What do you, what is going on with? You? Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> no surprise there. The, mm-hmm. If there's if anybody was playing COL Drag Race Bingo, you know that I'm going to bring it up at some point. Uh, Uh-oh. And this is just like the free space. Everyone gets to mark this down on their bingo card. Production's bullshit is back. Baby. <laughs> Production's bullshit is back. I, I just... We've already kind of talked about it. I think that was a part of the Heidi bullshit. Um mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, I, I don't know. I just feel yeah. like there's there's some weird things kind of happening um oh 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 okay can we talk about the lipstick assassin shit oh wait which one i mean i know which one you're talking about but but the the, the obvious one the last the one fucking, well not just that one. Oh no the, uh, the last one like are, are the second are the third one are the second one. <laughs> messy 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 like okay ma'am Okay, hold on. I, I was like, what is this? What is this riggery? What is going on here? Okay. So. I found this stuff so problematic. The song selections. <laughs> You're going to have Chanel back. Chanel. Chanel accused of taking $5,000 out of a woman's purse or whatever that bullshit was. Like, right. Like, the face. The face. Uh-huh. From the very beginning comes back and mm-hmm. i was like oh oh it's on it's on like donkey kong and then jimbo jumps around like a bimbo and i'm like okay i like jimbo but jimbo doesn't lip sync i don't know what this yeah. is like yeah like twice now i'm like okay i yeah. don't know if i want to see jimbo well, in person or maybe i do i just have to know that it's not going to be a lip sync that jimbo's going to deliver because it's not jimbo's right. thing 
Right. I will put this in the nicest way I know how. Okay. The rigory is is prevalent in these lip syncs. Mm-hmm. Um, um, production has its foot all up in this ass of of these of these of these things. The the Jimbo Pangina, like, not even redemption, but the the lip sync, like 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 smackdown of the century, apparently. Uh huh. Right. This moment of of revealing a rehash of what happened in in UK versus the world, all of this uh, shit. And and I, 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 you know, given what I've seen with Jimbo, and this is me, you know, talking, I don't think Jimbo's the best lip syncer. Right. And maybe it has to do with the fact that her body's on. But, you know, what, whatever it is, it just doesn't feel right. Mm-hmm. And now seeing her for a second time this past week, um, either one, she's just not a good lip syncer. Like, and that's just the way it is. Like, yeah. Jimbo relies on body and being a clown and all that stuff, and that's that's fine. R2, Jimbo is deliberately not doing these lips, doing these lip syncs justice for the sake of, I don't want to send a girl home. Mm. Maybe. Because that might be back again. Yeah. Nobody's shocked by it. And, like, again, so... Let's 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 go through the lip sync, shall we? As I kind of like talk about shit. Um, why did um, why did Jessica win the um, coconuts lip sync for your for your legacy against Raja, who we know is a kick ass killer lip syncer? Uh-huh. Probably because Raja was holding a lot back because it was thirty fucking thousand dollars. Like, and I don't want to be the queen that takes that away from somebody. Like, I, it ain't gonna be me. Like, fuck that shit. Like, you get your coin, girl. You've been on. You're on the show. Like, let me just drop this. I would have just <laughs> been like, oh, it's thirty thousand dollars. Okay, bye. I'll see y'all. Congratulations, Jessica. Just, <laughs> well, that brings up an interesting point because I know there's been some scuttlebutt online is that people feel like that the assassin shouldn't know the stakes. Mm-hmm. That the assassin should be completely oblivious to what's on the line. Right. They shouldn't say how much is, is, is getting won. Mm-hmm. They may know the original amount, like 10000 Like, we all know that. Like, that's sort of part of the deal. But to know that it's 30 like, mm, no. Um Yeah. And then, like, so there, there's that one. And Jessica did a very similar thing. I guess she borrowed Yara Sophia's um, <laughs> Um yeah. And I know the, the goal usually is to make Rue laugh and have fun with it, but uh, it was okay. It, uh, I have a really big problem with these, like, cheap-ass breastplates being used as for comic com- comedic effect. Mm-hmm. Um, da, 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 da. then, um, uh, this most recent one with uh, Jimbo again and Chanel, like, really, really, there's a part of me that wants to know what happened with the song selections. I feel like they've been fucking around on production and they changed up the songs because of how things went. Mm. Joan Jet, Bad Reputation. While a fun song, I wouldn't necessarily think about it as a lip sync song. Right. Me it's either. highly repetitive. Mm-hmm. And like what Chanel wore, like while the makeup and the hairstyle was like evoking in a way, like yeah. a rock song. Like, I didn't know that she was going to take the jacket off, that there was a reveal Mm -hmm. and there was a spangly, like, suit underneath it. Uh, Like, the moment she took the jacket off, I was like, why'd you do that? Yeah. Why did you do that? I mean, you won the lip sync anyway, somehow. But, um, I mean. Well, come on. She did better than Jimbo. I mean. Yeah. I was going to say somehow. I mean, I, I was. It just. It didn't. Like, it didn't fit. I'll put it like that. The whole thing was a mess. It was yeah. just a mess. Yeah. 
I, didn't I, like I was like, ew, I didn't like this. Can we have a redo? Can we pick another song? Like, what was this? It was bad. <laughs> it was just bad. It was bad. I just needed something else. I needed something else. I mean, but and look I, at what happened with like, what was it episode two? Yeah. Pangina and Jimbo, She Bop by Cindy Lauper. I didn't think that was the best lip sync either. No. And I was like, there's another highly repetitive song. Like, it's weird to me. And maybe I'm getting to be the old man on the porch <laughs> yelling at these kids to get off my stage. I mean, my front lawn, like that they're not evoking things that it's just like. Right. But at the same time, it's like fucking production picks these songs. I mean, when you're right, you're right. And then yeah. and then we we started the season so strong. The first episode, the bitch that comes out as the lip sync assassin, I don't even recognize. I was like, who the fuck is this? <laughs> and Candy says, that's my mama. And I was like, wait, what? Oh, yeah. I was like, Aja? I got goosebumps now. I was like, oh, yeah. shit. I was like, you might as well just like, get right, hip right. And I just, I hate it. I'm not going to be me. I'm not going to, I'm not <laughs> trying to be me, but I am of the pit. Like, okay, thank you so much. Mm. Right, just... right, right. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Like that was a lip sync. None of them have, 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 because you notice I didn't say anything about the other, that one. All the rest of them, garbage, mama. Right. Garbage. Right. I was like, first of all, Aja's had a glow up. Aja's had work done. Aja, mm -hmm. I believe. She is transitioning. Thank you. I was pretty sure. I was like, <laughs> and that is part of why I did not recognize the way she looked. And I was like, who this bitch? I was like, I don't even know this queen. And then when, like, when Candy says it, I was like, wait, what? Like, that was a gag. Gag. Yeah. Gag. And I was like, oh, it's over. Mm -hmm. It's like when Lagaja was gonna be the assassin. You're like, right. you're like, <laughs> I don't have, the, I don't have the clip. Oh, 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 fuck my drag. Like, like, <laughs> just, just leave. Just literally leave. Walk off stage right. Like, sit like, down. I don't, don't want to say leave. Just literally, just no, no. Just get off the go stage. Go back. Go, go back to the stick. Go back, like in the safe area, the safe zone, and just watch the show. Like, right. That's right. That's like, fair. Just, that's fair. Mm -hmm. Like, just do that. Like, mm, thank you. Now that no. would be balls. That would be balls. If the queen was like, "I'm gonna get off the stage." Nope, it's okay, and just walk off the stage, and then walk up towards the judges and be like, "I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna join you up here. We're just gonna watch the show." <laughs> like, I mean, talk about gag of all gags. I want, I want some queen to do that. That would be so ridiculous. But yeah, so like the first lip sync, I was like, oh, this is what we're bringing this season. Mm hmm. The wiggery. Are you kidding me? What yeah. is this BS they've been delivering? I'm like, no, 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 no. So that's why, that is why I'm like, no, ma'am. Like this, this mm -hmm. production BS, I'm not having it. Yeah. That's, that's, that's my biggest beef. Yeah. <sighs> <sighs> and see. So, uh, yeah, that's that's the first four episodes, kids. Like, there's there's a lot, a lot mm -hmm. going on. Um, yeah, like I, I, I mean, I really do feel. I think I really still feel at this moment it's the Heidi Jessica Jimbo thing. That's fair. Um, and I'm just gonna own it now. I don't want I don't want Candy to make it. <laughs> I'm still I'm still not a fan. Haven't been a fan, never will be a fan. There's no shade in that. Maybe it's tea. I'm like you, you like you've learned a little bit of your lesson. You haven't been super obnoxious this season. Fair, that's fair. But you understand what television is. And you still you still be in a little bit of a bitch when you when you decide you want to be. What's that? Use the word correctly. You're not an influencer. You're an instigator. <laughs> no. Use the right word, mama. Use the right word. 
<laughs> oh my god, that's too funny. I'm sorry, that just tickled me to no end. <laughs> true, so true. Yeah, so th there's lots to see what will be coming up. Uh, Snatch Game of Love is coming up. Mm -hmm. Apparently, some of the fandom is not happy about that we're still doing this thing, and they want the regular Snatch Game to come back, and I was like, nope, y'all aren't paying attention. That The regular version is for winners. That's how that works. It's a regular season, or it's winners. Nobody else gets to do that. We do the other, we do the, we do the cousin, we do the, 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 you know, other version. Yeah. We do the love connection. That's yes. what we do. Yes. Our dating game. But did you notice in yes. the preview, mm -hmm. not a single thing was a giveaway? Nope. We saw who the two guest bachelors, mm -hmm. quote unquote, are. Mm -hmm. And we saw a lot of laughs, reactions, yep. but that's it. We got nothing. Yeah. And I found that, laughing that I found that very interesting. Oh, I knew exactly what they were doing. That was production put all up in that shit. It is. It, it definitely is. Like, but I was like, boy, you don't want anybody to know what's coming next week. No. So there's a part of me that's hoping it's not a shit show. <laughs> honestly, really, honestly, I'm hoping it's not a disaster. Because if, because I think it's going to go one of two ways. It's either going to be a good one, or it's going to be bad. And this was a mm. misdirect, like an intentional yes. misdirect. Mm. So I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. But I'm sure y'all have thoughts as well. And there's plenty of ways that you can give us your opinions on the show or on our opinions. First of all, you can go to our blog. Go to the website, comesoutloud.com. You can post a comment on any of the items that get posted on there. You can also send us an email, comesoutloud at gmail.com. Or you could give us a call. You can get on that thing that you hold in your hand that's technically a computer that also makes phone calls <laughs> and, and you can call 361 col talk that's 361-265-8255 and you can uh, leave us a voicemail and we would be happy to play it on the show or hello we don't have to play it we can just discuss it or if you really want to make it private and you know with the heavy breathing in that i'll just le let damon hear it and like we'll just stop it there uh <laughs> I'm just saying. Uh, <laughs> if you would like to follow us on social medias, you can pretty much type in uh, Comes Out Loud Anywhere. We do have an uh, entourage uh, chat for Telegram. We still got to figure out what we're doing about that because Telegram changed your things, and I don't know how anybody finds it anymore. But if you type in C-O-L drag race, uh, you might be able to find it. We also have a calendar about when we're going to have our regular show go live. Uh, that's bit.ly backslash calendar dash C-O-L uh, for when we're going to be live streaming to youtube these are pre-recorded because uh i just mama ain't got the coin to invest in that kind of a high-tech computer so mm -mm. we just record locally and then post it if you would like to support us there's several ways to do that you can go to zazzle.com slash cubs out loud you can get various accoutrements as jeff likes to say there uh for example damon is holding up a lovely coffee mug that says cubs out loud drag race with our logo on it and uh, there's different houseware items. There's also apparel. So like Damon is showing off the consent is my foreplay drag pride shirt, uh, which we happen to love. I happened to decide today that I was going to go old school. So I'm wearing the oh. original, um, <laughs> very much faded pink tee <laughs> that I got when we started this years ago with the logo on it. It's it's vintage, darling. That's what that is. Vintage. Yes. Vintage. Okay. We'll <laughs> That's what that is. That's Yeah. Um, but there's various items on there you can get. You can uh, also get yeah, a handy towel, for example, mm -hmm. as Damon was showing. If you would like to uh, get more of the behind the scenes uh, production things, you can go to patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud and you can get the bookends, like the pre-show and the post-show from this uh, version for starting at a dollar a month or more to be supportive of us. And we very much appreciate it. You can also give us a one-time tip. You can make a donation at paypal.me slash Cubs Out Loud and we would greatly appreciate it. Obviously, this is a podcast. You can pretty much find anywhere that your favorite podcasts are available. Cubs Out Loud Drag Race is its own a separate feed if you're interested in that. Um, with that being said, Damon, 
where would people find you online if they wanted to get in touch? If you wish to get in touch with me, you can find me at theatercub79, that's T-H-E-A-T-R-E-C-U-B-7-9. All my spirit related sites are on Facebook. Or you can find me as pup underscore umbra on Twitter. The Twitter is definitely not safe for work. As I've been glancing down at my phone, I've been like, hmm, I should probably not watch that during the show. <laughs> <laughs> There's that. <laughs> nice. Scary. Uh, I pretty much can be found anywhere online as Gamer73. I do have a separate Twitter feed where I've pretty much tried to exonerate and like put everything that is drag race specific to that. It is not very easy because I have a main account on Twitter that is not safe for work. And there is a lot of you filthy animals out there that I like following that also like drag race. And so you fuck up my shit because I am not as smart as the logarithm to sometimes not see the posts that you put on there. But I do my best. And with that, uh, we are going to exit, but we'll be back in a couple of weeks to discuss the next few episodes of All Stars Season 8 of RuPaul's Drag Race. See you later, kittens. Bye. Child. Yes, I will be right back in the ladies' <laughs> room. Uh, I feel that. I feel that very much. I feel that very much. It is one of those things. And sometimes you wait until the very end.